the word web, what comes to mind? Spider-Man, duck feet, Charlotte, anyone? <laughs> I bet more than half of you thought of the internet. And the web as the internet is what I first thought of when I first heard the topic for this evening, a new medium. And at first, I thought I knew exactly what I was going to talk to you all about. But then about a month ago, I started wondering, what does that actually mean, a new medium? So I Googled it, and I found this. I found that a medium is a means of doing something. <laughs> OK, but that's unsatisfyingly vague. And in my mind, it begets even more questions, because when does something become something anyway? It reminds me of this mind-tripping debate I went to at the Hayden Planetarium on what is nothing. <laughs> and then what makes something new? Does new mean innovation? Pretty sure the definition of innovation is new it. So I Googled again. And the act of introducing something new, which is equally vague. And look, now we're back to that what is something, which brings us back to that general definition of what is a medium. <laughs> so QED, by transitive relation, are medium and innovation intrinsically connected? Well, let's see. You could think of a new medium as innovation in itself, right? An alternate way to express an idea, perhaps more fully than was possible before. OK? But here's where this gets interesting. I took off my Googling hat, and I put on my York hat, and dusted off the Latin that this amazing school taught me. And I looked at innovation a bit more closely, and I found that innovation comes from innovatus, which means to renew, restore, return to a thing. Return to a thing? Innovation, generally thought of what moves humanity forward, is returning to a thing? Well, that makes sense if you start to think about that every idea is just the meeting point of many other ideas. Like Newton said, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. And all some things could be thought of as idea seeds, little ideas that get built upon and built upon through generations until they demand the creation of new mediums to be expressed more fully. And the beauty is, as new mediums emerge, they, of course, inspire new variations of ideas. It's a nice little loop, isn't it? One of my favorite TED Talks is by Steven Johnson. And he said, an idea is a network, which I love. So a new idea is just the product of things quite old expressed a little differently for the moment. Let's see how this comes to life. So my first introduction to this concept actually started without me back in 1971. And the king medium at the time, at least for advertising, was television. And one of the top spots was called Hilltop, and it was for Coke. Take a look. Be singing this song for days. <laughs> You're welcome. So, <laughs> I'd like to buy the world a Coke and keep it company. It's essentially an ode to connecting people. And the man who thought of it was named Bill Backer, and he was the creative director for Coke at their ad advertising agency. And he thought of this idea while he was delayed at an airport, people watching. And he realized this. He realized the words, let's have a Coke, were actually a subtle way of saying, let's keep each other company for a while. And then the quote continues that he knew they were being spoken all over the world, and it was a little bit of commonality between all people. So whether you're a fan of advertising or not, it's a nice idea about connection. And then it was his coworker, a man named Harvey Gabor, who also worked at the agency, who thought to bring it to life as a world chorus shot on top of a hilltop for TV. And fun fact, those weren't actors. Those were sons and daughters of diplomats, so it really is a representation of people from around the world. OK, nice. So flash forward and then flash back a little bit. 
A few years ago, some folks at Google were looking for inspiration, and they returned to the greats. They were looking at these iconic ads. They came across this, and they thought, huh, technology has changed. What if this idea had come about today? How would this idea come to life differently, given the medium of the web? So they decided to find out. And they called up Harvey and the gang, and they literally rebriefed. Here was the output. Connected vending machines placed around the world where anyone could go online or go up to one and send a Coke free and a little message to a stranger in another country. And then they could send their reaction back. And the takeaway isn't that technology lets us literally buy the world Cokes. The takeaway is that we could amplify that same idea of connection that Bill and Harvey had 40 years ago, but now in a more tangible way given the medium of the web. We could actually connect, connect people across geographies and locations from the digital world to the physical world. But it's the same idea just returned to and built upon. So I'm on the team at Google that did this project. We're called Art, Copy, and Code. And our mission is to bring these three disciplines together by blending creativity and technology together in new ways. And we do that by combining designers and coders and engineers and marketers and product and sales and producers and we try to create these never-been-done experiences in marketing and advertising that push the limits of what's possible to do and reimagine where this is all going. And my role within that is to actually make it happen. My job is to recognize disparate variables and then find the best way to connect very different thinking people to solve a problem together. And what I've learned by doing this is that innovation, and our team is referenced as an innovation program, comes not from the individual experts that I'm connecting. It comes from the convergence of all of us. And our breakthrough inspiration moment might be from an experience in the past, or a passing comment, or a prototype that fails but spawns some other path. And what I've realized is that this same thing is actually happening on a much grander scale. I'm focused on creating deliberate connections to solve a particular problem with our team. But the same thing is happening naturally with all of us across the world. And here's how I wrapped my head around it. So if you think about humanity as a collective brain or a collective conscious, we're each a neuron firing out into it. So every idea and action that you have contributes to this interconnected web that we're all building on with each other. Another one of my favorite TED Talks is by Matt Ridley, and he says, we're all working for each other, which I think is a really nice way to put it. And if you look at history, you'll see this time and time again, although it's commonly referred to as happy accidents. But I'd like to take a look at that. So I did. And we'll start with some low-tech examples. Do you know why toothpaste is in a tube? It used to come in a jar. Back in the 1800s, a dentist's son went on vacation to Paris and saw a painter squeezing paint out onto his palate. But the inventor of the paint tube, John Goff Rand, this is his patent behind me, had no idea that his innovation in art would lead to making your morning routine more convenient. But one man's enthusiasm for art converged with another man's enthusiasm for oral hygiene, and we all got a much larger benefit. <laughs> or this. Many of us played with this as kids, maybe even ate it. <laughs> But Play-Doh started out as something not at all for kids. It started out as a cleaning product to wipe soot off of wallpaper. And it was becoming obsolete because after World War II, we switched from heating our houses with gas, or excuse me, with coal to gas. And then there was no more soot on wallpaper. So it was going out of business until they realized that the inventor's sister-in-law, a school teacher, had already been repurposing the product in her classroom to mold Christmas ornaments. So, 
her enthusiasm for an entirely different area helped her see a different use for the same product and thus saved kindergarten for all of us. <laughs> but my point here is that these aren't happy accidents. This is just how humanity and innovation work. And James Burke, the science historian, of course, dedicated his entire lifetime to investigating how all of our modern technologies link back to inventions and histories and events throughout the course of history. For example, did you know that the movie projector is linked to the invention of the canon and along the way intersects with billiard balls and record players? <laughs> this is just how things work. And what's exciting about technology, at least to me, is that it accelerates our ability to have these connection points. We can have more toothpaste paint tube moments faster. And why is that? Because we all have a connection portal in our hands. We're all sharing and connecting like never before. And of course, we're using the phone in a way that it wasn't originally intended. That's an idea seed evolved. And you all know that you don't have regular phone calls with your friends or your parents or your kids. You're texting and using apps and taking photos but you're sharing with each other. There are now more mobile devices on this planet than there are people, and 1.9 billion of us have smartphones, and we're sharing and connecting. This map behind me actually shows all of the connected devices to the internet as of about last summer, which is staggering. But what's even more staggering is that this is only 39% of the world's population. The next Billion people are coming online, and they're coming online through a phone. So back to that humanity as a collective conscious, I get really excited by who do we get to connect with now, and how does that change what we get to build towards together? And of course, as we become more connected digitally, we accelerate the convergence of our digital and physical worlds. We saw that a little bit in the Coke example, but the convergence of our physical and digital worlds creates a new medium in itself so that we can solve problems like we hadn't been able to before. And Google's actually working on a technology around this. There is a group in Mountain View called the Advanced Technologies and Projects Group, ATAP. And they have a tablet that's called Tango. It's not for sale, it's just something that they're working on. But Tango blends the physical and the digital together in a really inspiring way. So basically, it's a tablet with different sensors on the back, and the device knows its location and it knows the direction it's facing. It can recognize where it's been before, and as you move, it has a sense of what it's looking at. I'll let the team explain a bit more fully. We are physical beings that live in a 3D world, yet mobile devices today assume that the physical world ends at the boundaries of the screen. Our goal is to give mobile devices a human-scale understanding of space and motion. This is going to allow people to interact with their environment in just a fundamentally different way. We can prototype in a couple of hours something that would take us months or even years before because we didn't have this technology readily then. A human scale understanding of space and motion. I think it's really cool. And a few months ago, we actually got to do a project with this technology. We partnered with Tango. But we did it because to start a project, we always return to something. So we returned to an insight about our physical world. Because one thing technology is really good at is taking a physical or taking a frustrating experience in the physical world and making it a little less painful. So what was a frustrating experience we were trying to solve? Let's put this in the first person. We'll play a little game. OK, so when I say holidays, what comes to mind? OK, how about holiday shopping? OK, how about Holiday shopping three days before Christmas where you're still scrambling to find the perfect gift. Sound familiar? So we did some research and it turns out people put a ton of pressure on themselves to make the holidays a really special and memorable experience. And a large part of that is finding and giving the perfect gift. So holiday shopping has become a little bit of an anxiety point. So this past December, we were partnering with Target and we thought, we don't want to create anything new. We just want to make a current experience better. So we did just that. We partnered with some really smart agencies and with Tango, and we reimagined the store. So now, imagine the store, instead of a battleground of well-intentioned folks feverishly fighting to check off the gift list, we're instead a playful winter wonderland, a battleground of snowballs. 
So imagine you're walking through the store, and instead of aisles, you see snowbanks at the same height. And there's mischievous rabbit characters romping through the aisles with you. And instead of taking your frustration out on the person who cut you in line, you can have a snowball fight with Zoomer the dinosaur, which 10-year-olds will get that reference. <laughs> Take a look. We then created a fully immersive experience using an experimental Google tablet that maps physical spaces in 3D. This transformed every inch of Target stores into a virtual winter world. Guess we have snowball fights, discover characters, and find fun surprises down every aisle. <laughs> So an insight fueled an idea, which fueled a technology, which fueled a medium, which fueled an experience. And it will undoubtedly inspire a new idea, which I can't wait to see. OK, so what am I trying to say with all of this? Uh, there's two points that I'd like to leave you with. First, think about the infinite series of connection points that you yourself are a product of. And later, maybe after this talk, I would challenge you to close your eyes and ask yourself, what does my web look like? Because there is a whole network to thank of people behind you, people you know, people you don't, inventions, ideas, interactions, connection points that influence the way you think. So that when you say my idea, it's really an our idea. And I think that's worth acknowledging from time to time. Secondly, what do you want to contribute to that web? If we go back again to that humanity as a collective conscious, you are contributing, whether you want to or not. And you can't always control all of the connections you're going to inspire. Some of them are quite indirect. But you can control what you fire out. So put another way, what are your enthusiasms? Ray Kurzweil, one of the foremost inventors and futurists of our time, said, what we spend our time on is the most important decision that we make. Code lets us do amazing things, and the web and technology may be the product of our collective connections, but the convergence of us and our enthusiasms is actually the ultimate medium. And I think that is what we'll always be returned to as we move forward together. Thank you.